Welcome back to another video about traveling waves. In this video, we will have a recap of some properties of waves, but also introduce some more properties specific to a sinusoidal wave. We will also cover more types of waves as well as intensity. Without further ado, let's begin. In the last video, we had talked about the different types of wave properties, which included amplitude, wavelength, frequency, and wave speed. For these types of waves, I had assumed that they were only applied to sinusoidal waves, but could actually be applied to any other wave through any medium or from any source. But we were also specific when it came to the wave speed through a string because it considered the tension in the string as well as, as its linear density. Let us have a more general view or a different interpretation of the wave speed. We know that speed or velocity is equal to distance over time. We can try to apply this same principle into sinusoidal waves. When we look at any sine graph, we want to determine what the distance and time is. In this case, the distance is the wavelength in meters and the time is the period in seconds. Therefore, the wave speed V is equal to the wavelength divided by the period. Since we know the period is the reciprocal of frequency, the wave speed can be rewritten to be the product of wavelength and frequency, which is V is equal to lambda F. It is important to note that the wave speed is a property of the medium and the frequency is the property of the source. For example, if I have a tuning fork and, and vibrate it, it vibrates with a unique frequency. The tuning force, fork is the source and it produces sound waves that travel through the air, which is the medium. We will talk more about sound waves later. If you remember from last week, oscillations and simple harmonic motion were basically sinusoidal waves. So another property to mention is angular frequency in which the equation, equation is shown here. One final property of sinusoidal waves is the wave number, which is denoted by the letter K. It is essentially the number of waves per unit distance. If we think about angular frequency, it is the number of waves that occur per second. The units were in hertz or seconds to the negative one power. For the wave number, the governing equation is k is equal to 2 pi divided by the wavelength. Since we know wavelength is in meters, then the units for wave number is meters to the negative 1 power. Additionally, we can formulate a relationship between wave number and angular frequency. The wave number is linearly proportional to the angular frequency by the wave speed, as shown in the equation at the very bottom omega is equal to v times k. In the last video, if you remember the snapshot and history graphs, both related to displacement d. For the snapshot graph, it had a fixed time, so the displacement related to position. On the other hand, for the history graph, it had a fixed position, so the displacement relate, related to time. Similar to the oscillations chapter, we had position, velocity, and acceleration functions for waves. But remember, those were only a function of time. For traveling waves, we can come up with an equation for displacement. Considering the snapshot and history graphs, we know that both time and position influence the displacement. So the two variables must be considered in this case. The derivation of the displacement equation is in the textbook, but the equation itself is shown here. It can be simplified down to the equation at the very bottom, which considers the amplitude of the wave, wave number k, angular frequency omega, and phase constant phi naught, which deals with the wave's initial conditions. We can also obtain the velocity equation of a sinusoidal wave by taking the derivative of the displacement equation. Because velocity takes the derivative of the displacement with respect to time, we can do that. 
Although the displacement is a function of two variables, remember position and time, we can ignore position in the derivative. This should also look somewhat familiar because if we take the maximum velocity, it's when the cosine component is equal to one. So therefore the maximum velocity is simply omega times the amplitude, which is the same as what we had seen in the oscillations chapter. One type of wave is the sound wave. They are longitudinal waves that are produced from a loudspeaker or another source. Remember, longitudinal waves have both compressions and rarefactions. For the sound wave, imagine saying a sentence in a microphone. When you say a sentence, you have breaks or small gaps between every word. When the loudspeaker is on, the breaks, essentially showing compression in the air molecules as they oscillate back and forth. Additionally, the speed of sound is basically the wave speed of sound. For air and at a temperature of 20 degrees Celsius, it is at 343 meters per second. Changing the medium or temperature will also change the speed of sound. For example, let's say you are submerged in, completely underwater. If music is playing on the loudspeaker on a table outside, it sounds more muffled if you are underwater compared to when you are outside and exposed to the air. This is because the sound waves coming from the loudspeaker has more difficulty in traveling through the water because it has a significantly denser uh, property or density than air. The other type of wave is the electromagnetic wave. Although electricity and magnetism is not emphasized until physics 40C, electromagnetic waves are basically waves that oscillate due to the interaction between electric and magnetic fields. One important constant to remember is the speed of light. The speed of light is the wave speed of an electromagnetic wave completely sealed in a vacuum. It has a value of 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Finally, we have the intensity of a traveling wave. The intensity is a ratio between power and area. When a sound wave travels from a loudspeaker, it can spread out like shown in the image. For this specific case, we can assume that the wave is both uniform and spherical. So the area is simply the surface area of a sphere, which is pi r squared. Therefore, the bottom equation can be obtained if we know that the power comes from the loudspeaker. That concludes all traveling waves. If you have any questions or concerns, please feel free to comment down below or stop by to our SI office hours. Our times are in the description link down below. Thank you for watching and take care.